We've been talking about uh, privacy issues, owning our own identity, and the digital nature of invading our privacy that has been contained within this omnibus bill that Mark Amaday voted for. And today I want to talk to you about the NICS fix or fix NICS that's within this omnibus bill. And it's really designed to go after the perpetrators of school murders, but what we know is underlying is that they really want our guns. And this is probably the most uh, curious way that they have decided to do that, in that they have decided to incentivize government agencies to data mine their uh, groups that they service and put those into the NICS background checks so that if you're a senior citizen and get a check from the government, that check now qualifies you to be in this database that will go toward that background check. And now you are in a database that could red flag you for gun ownership, to buy a gun, or to even get a CCW. This doesn't just apply to a senior citizen who's getting a social security check, but it may apply to a veteran. And in fact, in 2007, they uh, passed a bill that did put veterans into this kind of a background check, and 257,000 of those veterans were then denied the right to buy a gun or even to carry concealed. So this is something that's going to invade all of our privacy in some way if we have uh, any kind of a um, liaison or a, a meeting with a government agency that's collecting data on us, and this is private data. Things like, did, have you ever suffered from postpartum depression that might get into this database and be a red flag for you with a psychiatrist saying, well, I don't think that person's fit because they took this drug or that drug. ADHD may become one of those red flags. PTSD one of those red flags, and it goes on and on if you have a caregiver. And not just to the point where you can't buy, but it may also um, become a problem for those who are, have a gun inheritance and not being able to get that inheritance because of this red flag that was put on the person that had the, the um, guns that you were supposed to inherit. So it, it really is one of those insidious things where the government now has put everything in this omnibus bill and is trying to come in around a back door, not to say you can't own a gun, or you can own a gun, but to just put in that database those things that might restrict you from owning the gun. And today I'm talking here with John. And John, I, I want to have your feelings. I, you, you kind of have heard my feelings on this fix Nick's bill and, and uh, what I believe is a back door. Talk to me about how you feel about um, just what's going on with the government these days and our Second Amendment rights. Well, you used a word that I would have used, insidious. It's a way for the government to get around all of the laws, to, to circumvent the law to affect those of us who want to buy a gun or to own firearms. Um, I have long held, and I appreciate your saying, school murders as opposed to school shootings. I have long held that gun-free zones are nothing but target-rich environments. We need to do something to protect the schools, not take guns away from citizens. I've done nothing as far as any of the school murders are concerned. I haven't even been near a school. Um, I'm retired law enforcement. I, I think I know the law pretty much uh, down to the bottom line. Uh, I follow the law. I also protect myself. I protect my friends and my family if that became necessary. I would pre protect the people in my church because I also carry a gun in church. Again, uh, gun-free zone, target-rich environment. Um, according to our Constitution, the government is not supposed to build databases of gun owners. And that's what they're doing. They're violating federal law. Well, now, technically, technically, they're not going to make a database of those of us who 
own a gun. They're just going to make a database of those who can't own a gun, of those who uh, they think are dangerous for some reason. They become dangerous or a threat to us, and so they can't own a gun. And But the, the criteria is so broad that most of us will get caught in that net. So uh, that's why I say they came in the back door at us with this. I was going to say, you don't really believe that crap, do you? <laughs> Um, it's just more lies. Look, what, what we have to realize is that there are 535 people in Washington, D.C. who are totally corrupt, and they don't care about you or me. They feather their own nests. They're all multimillionaires. They all have a great retirement plan. Every single one of them does not have to worry about the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare. And every single time they pass a bill that affects you and I, they exempt themselves from it. We have a corrupt government, period, end of story. And if they can rip us off and take our way, our rights away to defend ourselves, and what was it Thomas Jefferson said? The strongest reason for the citizens to keep the right, maintain the right to keep and bear arms is as a last resort to resist a tyrannical government. Guess what, folks? Get in line. It's it's there. It's there now. You are feeling it right now. I, I think you're feeling it more so because here we are standing in a gun sore. And uh, we're feeling uh, this reaction to, as I say, to these school murders. Because we know that shooting is a sport. And they've taken our words and now they're making a different meaning for those words and we've got to quit talking with their narrative we've got to quit speaking their language but but we know that there's been all these protests against guns and yet guns aren't what caused these school murders why don't we start protesting against cars because they sure kill a lot more people than guns why don't we protest against ladders more people are hurt falling off of ladders than are killed by guns. What about swimming pools? Gee whiz, look at the number of children that die in swimming pools. We ought to ban those too. Let's be reasonable, people. Uh, You don't defend yourself with a swimming pool or a ladder. You defend yourself with a gun. And that's the bottom line. I am angry that the sudden turnaround all of a sudden against those of us who are law-abiding citizens. I don't break the law. Like I said, I'm retired law enforcement. I don't break the law. I follow the law. Why are they coming after my guns? Why are they attacking me? I've done nothing wrong. And I'm sorry, but the high school students and the junior high schools that are out there demonstrating, they aren't, I'm sorry, they don't have enough life experience to know what the devil they're talking about. They follow somebody else's monologue, if you will, either a parent or a teacher who, you know, professors and teachers who are anti-gun, extremely left-wing leaning, and and they're just repeating what they heard from someone else. They, I'm sorry, they don't have enough life experience to be able to think for themselves and deal with the facts. If they dealt with the facts, I think their protests would change. So our cure, our cure for corrupt government officials for those that um, say one thing to us and yet vote entirely the different way, uh, like Mark Amity, he's telling us that he is pro-gun, yet he has a C rating from the Gun Owners of America, and he voted for this fix nix. So that is a truly hypocritical vote. And the only real remedy for corruption in government is to get folks in there that aren't corrupt and keep changing that until we do find integrity in government. Uh, You presented Thomas Jefferson's ultimate, ultimate um, uh, remedy, but but truly the one that's available to us right now is to get out the vote and vote for people with integrity. That's that's correct. The, The current crop of politicians we have now, there's a very, very easy way to tell whether they're lying. Watch their lips. If they start moving, 
Well, I know there's many Americans and many Nevadans that agree with you, John. Thanks so much for, for talking with me about thank, this issue thank today. Thank you, Sharon, for your efforts. We really appreciate it. We do. We appreciate you and what you're doing for us. Thank you. Those are kind words.